Hello, welcome back to the Lizzo Wellbeing YouTube channel with me, Lizzo. Now today marks the final video in our little series on YouTube, shining a light on how menopause can impact our relationships from sex and libido to love and dating in midlife. We've covered it all recently. And as promised earlier in the month, today I'm answering some of your questions that you have sent in. Okay, so I have your questions here. Uh, starting off with, hi Liz, I have absolutely no libido after full hysterectomy and I'm unable to take HRT. Any help you can offer would be much appreciated. Okay, so the first thing to say is that there is definitely help for those who've had hysterectomies uh, to take HRT and that is definitely something that you should be talking about with your doctor. In fact, when you have had a hysterectomy, actually replacing hormones can be even more important. So that is kind of the fundamental advice. But also there's lots of different forms of HRT. And even if you don't take estrogen, you can take testosterone. So you don't need the progesterone part. That part is the bit that protects your uterus. If you've had a full hysterectomy, then obviously you don't need that. But you can take testosterone and you can also have vaginal HRT. You can have vaginal estrogen, for example, which is considered extremely safe. So pretty much everybody can take that and there's no issue. So just to show you, uh, this is what the licensed testosterone looks like for women. Unfortunately, in the UK, it's only available privately. It's called Androfem. And otherwise, a lot of GPs will prescribe the male version off license. And in fact, it is one of the things that is regulated in the UK for loss of libido. So it is something that you could definitely talk about with your GP and hopefully get some help. So I really hope that that does help you. We've got lots more resources, obviously, on Liz Our Wellbeing if you want to go and have a quick look. And I'll make sure that we pop all the links on the caption below. Um, another question here also about libido, sexual desire. She says, hi Liz, I've no sexual desire at all, even after addressing vaginal atrophy. I just cannot be bothered. <laughs> Do you have any suggestions? Uh, and also another question, hi Liz, what natural supplements can help with libido? Okay, so... Uh, let's do the first issue there about vaginal atrophy. So that is super common because what happens during perimenopause and menopause is that we lose our estrogen from the vaginal area and that can lead to dryness. So if you're taking systemic HRT, which is like the transdermal gels or patches or tablets, then that can help. But sometimes it's not enough. You know, sometimes even if you're already having that kind of HRT, you still need a little bit of localized vaginal estrogen. So this is what it looks like, just to show you. These are some of the kinds. These are the little pessaries. They're called Vagifem. And you use these, you can use them every day. Sometimes you're suggested to use them maybe once or twice or three times a week. It just sort of depends on your symptoms. Super safe. They stay within the vaginal cavity, so they don't go throughout the body. So that means that even those who are having treatment for current breast cancer can take vaginal estrogen and that's a conversation that you need to have with your medic. Um, there's another form as well that you can take. This is called Intra Rosa. comes in little pessaries like this with a little applicator and again this is super safe. You can use it every day and it contains something a little bit different. It's DHEA and DHEA converts to testosterone. This has also got a little bit of estrogen in it. And it really helps not only with vaginal dryness, but it can also impact and improve libido. So that is something definitely to talk about. This one's called Intra Rosa. You can look it up online. You can find out more about it. So that will certainly help. In terms of natural supplements, okay, I do have a slight issue with that word because hormones are natural. You know, we are made of hormones as women. And if you have body identical hormones, which most regulated NHS HRT is these days, it comes from the wild yam plant. These are naturally occurring compounds within the body. More natural, I would argue, than some of the herbal remedies. You know, you can take things like black cohosh and sage, for example, but they're not naturally found within the body, but our hormones are. So that's kind of, I guess, my little soapbox bit. But if you want to look at some of the herbs that have been associated with helping with libido, I guess one of the most famous is probably maca, M-A-C-A, maca. 
And you can find that in all kinds of supplements. You can find it in Life Armor. You can find it in indie supplements. I'll pop a link below actually to some of the favorite ones, many of which have a Liz Loves discount. So do go and take a look. So maca is something to look at. Also Siberian ginseng, that's often used by herbalists for women with libido issues. Uh, ashwagandha is another adaptogenic herb that can also help. And actually, you know, prioritizing your sleep, making sure that you feel rested and not stressed. Magnesium, I particularly like magnesium glycinate. That's particularly useful at bedtime just to help sort of relax you and calm you, make you feel a little bit less anxious. So I hope that those are some of the natural remedies, some of the sort of plant-based options or herbal options that might help. Okay, so on to the next question. Uh, hi, Liz. My husband had aggressive prostate, so sex is no more. Some advice, please. I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, okay, so I did a podcast recently with a brilliant sex therapist called Kate Moyle. Do take a listen to that. Again, we'll pop the link so that you can have a listen easily. She had a very interesting view on kind of defining sex because we tend to think of sex as only penetrative sex. But of course, it's so much more than that. So, you know, if the, the penetrative side of it is an issue, there are lots and lots of other ways to experience sex with your other half. And I won't go into too many graphic details. Do take a listen to the podcast. But I think it's really helpful because it's helpful to redefine what sex is and that level of intimacy that doesn't always have to come from like the straightforward view of penetrative sex. OK, it can still be erotic and sensual and pleasurable and sharing and caring and all those lovely things that we associate with a really positive and healthy sexual relationship. So I hope that is helpful for you. Uh, this is an interesting one. Uh, this is slightly different. It says, hi, Liz, I want more sex, but my other half is struggling to keep up with me. What to do? OK, so I think it's important to say here that actually men do lose some of their hormones, too, during midlife and beyond. So it might be worth sending them off to the GP for a simple blood test for testosterone. So testosterone does decline in guys, really from the age of kind of 50 onwards, but it can happen at any time. A couple of symptoms of this to watch out for. Men tend to put on weight around the middle, so they tend to get more of a, a belly. That can be one of the indications of testosterone dropping. And they can also get very low mood and depression. So again, if you know, if he's feeling low, it could be a sign of low testosterone levels. Super easy to replace. And GPs are well versed in this, you know, please say to him, you shouldn't feel embarrassed, but maybe it is worth getting checked, checked out because actually low testosterone is not something that you necessarily want to have as a guy. So not just for sex, but, you know, for muscle strength and brain and mood, as I say. So for all those reasons, it probably is worth getting checked out. Um, another one here talking about vaginal dryness. Uh, Hi Liz, I'm taking an oestrogen blockage tablet. Because of this, I've noticed my vagina is dry. What can I do? Okay, well, this literally comes back to what I mentioned before, Vagifem or Intra Rosa, or you can get vaginal pessaries, gels, creams, all kinds of things which are considered safe while you're on oestrogen blocking medication. And that's because these stay locally within the vagina, okay? They don't grow throughout the body. They're not what's called systemic. So that is definitely a conversation. Do please have that with your GP, or if you need to find a specialist, then again, we'll pop some resources uh, at the end of this. Uh, last one here, oh dear, my husband is so grumpy about everything, it just puts me off, especially as my libido in, is low in menopause. Please help me, Liz. Okay, so if we're talking about low libido in menopause, it really does come back to our hormones. You need to have a talk with your medical provider. Testosterone, as I say, is licensed in the UK for low libido for women. So it's a very straightforward conversation. You can go and have a look at the NICE guidelines if you want to check it out. We've got resources. You'll find more in a little e-guide that I wrote called The Truth About HRT. It talks about that. But testosterone genuinely is the answer for women as well as for men to put you back in the mood. Well, I hope this is helpful. 
So I hope that helps even just a little as ever. Do take a look at the Liz Our Wellbeing website as we have so many helpful free resources on there from blogs and e-guides to a whole library of podcasts. Loads of great stuff to dive into. And of course, not forgetting our fabulous wellbeing community on Instagram, on Facebook, TikTok even, and of course, right here on YouTube. We can all share the love and help each other. Well, that's it for this week. Next week, I'll be back with another vlog. So do make sure that you are subscribed to never miss a film clip or an episode. Until the next time we chat, go well. Bye-bye.